let us start our discussion of the strength of material first chapter that is your load right this is a very basic chapter we'll detail we'll study this chapter in a very detail and the rest of your strength of material subjects chapter after load and the machine design also if you go through this chapter load in a very detailed manner then everything would be easy in your later discussions right you will be very easily able to understand how a load is acting what is the effect of that load on a body and how much stress is developed where the stress is developed how to design a body regarding that load you will be able to analyze so just pay some more attention to this chapter that is the load if i say what is the load load is an any external force or couple right which is applied on a body or to which a component is subjected during its functionality when a component of a body or a machine or a structure is undergoing any function then how much the external force or the external moment moment is the bending moment that rotation or you can say torque how much is the external moment or external force that body is subjected during its functionality that is known as your load for example the example of the load is your bending couple when you try to bend a system or bend a beam twisting couple if you if you are just twist any shaft if you are trying to twist any shaft or some inertia forces because of the weight of a body or another body suppose if i say this marker is put put up in my hand so this the weight of this marker on my hand is a kind of force and that is known as the load on my hand on my hand the load of this marker is acting so that is the basic definition of the load if i say that forces are of two types in any machine or in any body if any force is acting then that force is of two types first one is the body force body force means that the entire force is distributed over the entire volume of that body right if i say if this is a marker the weight of this marker is evenly or you can say uniformly distributed over its entire volume right at each and every volume at each and every point there is a self weight of this body right so the weight on this of this marker is distributed uniformly on this entire volume so that type of force that is the self weight of this marker on this termed as the body force so body force is the that force which is distributed over the entire volume of that body for example you can say self weight of that body next is your second type of force is your surface force surface force are those forces which are distributed over the area of a surface at some area only that force is acting right for example if i say at this roof this is a roof some shaft is hanging or some beam is hanging some structural member is hanging from this roof so this structural member has some self weight it is having have some self weight right which is acting in the downward direction so this self weight will be a kind of body force right this self weight is a kind of your body force but on this body if i apply a load p let us say if i apply a load p here how if i say the let this is the beam or this is a structure which is hanging and at this point i am applying some load force p on this then this force p is distributed among this area only among this surface area only so this force p which is acting on this surface this is a kind of surface force right this is a kind of surface force and in strength of material we are neglecting the self weight of a body why we are neglecting the self weight of a body we'll discuss when we go through the stress and strains chapter but just to make one thing very clear that in strength of material the self weight of the body will always be neglected you will not be 
considering the self weight of the body or body force in strength of material we are only dealing with the surface force that is acting on a, on a area of a surface right now loads are classified based on three parameters this is the classification of loads loads are classified in strength of material or in general we can say the loads or a force which is acting on a body is classified in three different parameters first parameter is with respect to time how a force is varying with respect to time second one is with respect to direction how a force is acting on a body in which direction and third one is with respect to distribution how that force is distributed among the body on the body how is the distribution that is the classification based on the with respect to distribution now we'll start with with respect to time how the force is changing with respect to time i am just giving the overview we will discuss each and every force in detail right just for your understanding i am just making this chart with respect to time loads are classified in two terms that is one is static load another one is your dynamic load static loads as the name suggests it is means it is not changing or it is remain constant with respect to the time with respect to time this force will not change and dynamic load means with respect to time the magnitude of the force is changing static load is of two types first one is your dead load second one is your gradually applied load we'll see what what do we mean by dead load and gradually applied load dynamic load is again of two types one is your impact load and another one is your fatigue load right impact load is the load which is acting for a short interval of time this type of load which i am exerted on this board that load is a impact load which is acting for a short number of time for a short interval of time fatigue load is that load which is changing with respect to time both its magnitude and direction right force is a kind of vector or load is a kind of vector which has magnitude and direction so we can say in fatigue load either the magnitude is changing or the direction is changing or both magnitude and direction is changing with respect to time so this is the classification of load with respect to time with respect to direction there are two types of load one is your normal load and one is your shear load right normal load if i say in just for an overview normal loads are those loads which are acting on a body perpendicular to its cross section right if this is a body and this is a cross section of this body so this is a plane of cross section if any force or any load which is acting perpendicular to this is known as normal load and tangential or shear load is which are acting parallel to the cross section this is the plane of cross section this my hand is the plane of cross section if any load which is acting parallel to it is known as tangential or shear load normal load is again of two types one is axial load and one other one is eccentric axial load we'll see what do we mean by axial and eccentric axial and normal loads overall will be of two types that is one is tensile another one is compressive right if this is a body this is a tensile load and if i compress it this is a compressive load shear load is again of two types one is your transverse shear load which we will say as tsl for our simplification transverse shear load and another one is eccentric transverse shear load that is etsl that we will discuss what do we mean by these types of load with respect to distribution loads are of two types one is concentrated load which is concentrated at a point in the body at only one point the load is concentrated and another one is your distributed load when the load is distributed among the body right which is distributed over an entire or some amount of volume of the body that is a distributed load concentrated load is of two types one is concentrated point load that is your 
your concentrated point load and another one is concentrated moment. If there is any bending couple is there, then that is concentrated moment. Distributed load is of three types. One is your uniformly distributed load. When the load is distributed uniformly along the length of the road. And another one is your uniformly variable load. Means the magnitude of the load is varying uniformly and for over the entire length of the beam or the road. And next last one is your uniformly distributed moment. If there is a moment that is uniformly distributed along the length. So this is the basic classification of loads. We will discuss it one by one. We will start with the static load and we will finish it with the with respect to distribution. So overview with respect to time two types of load static dynamic with respect to direction two types normal tangential with respect to distribution two types concentrated distribution load and this is the further classification of all of these loads.